Today, I will be showing you how to create this. Hello, my name is Ines Alea from ToleratedCinematics.com. Okay, so pretty cool effect that we saw in Flash series from the first season, episode 1. And yeah, we are going to get started on this effect. It's a very easy effect to accomplish. And we're going to work on a shot that has been shot on a tripod. But you can easily do that on moving footage as well, just by using one simple trick that I will be showing you in this uh, tutorial as well. Okay, so the first thing you have to do is use your video file. So let me delete everything here and I have only my video file. My video file was uh, shot and logged so it's a very flat mode and I applied just a simple LUT. I'll be um, giving this video file in the descriptions below so you can work on the same footage like I am doing right here. So uh, next step is to find something on Google uh, tire tracks something similar like these and I found these and I made a new composition well I just created a new, new composition by clicking here and I said, yeah, with a width of like uh, 2,000 and a height of 500. Let's get started with that. Then import your tire tracks in here and rotate until you see the tire track you want to work on. So I'll be working on this one here. And then press S on the keyboard and scale your layer up all the way like this. Uh, just so it fits in the composition nicely. And we're going to use this as reference. So the next thing to do is right click and create a new solid. I would suggest using a different color than the black and white. And so we can see easily the difference between these. And then click OK. Then zoom in a little bit and hold your space to move around in your composition. Uh, you can just uh, move around with the hand tool here. And then we're going to disable this solid so we can see the background layer. Next we're going to click on our pen tool and we are going to select our red solid here and I'm going to zoom in, uh, zoom in a little bit more here uh, like this and then I'll start drawing like this but I won't be using these curves I will just use straight lines and just really quickly make this up. Okay, so as you can see, I just made one of these. Uh, next thing I will do is I will enable it so we can see it here. And I'll duplicate it by holding Ctrl and pressing D on the keyboard while selecting that layer. And then I'm going to uh, scale, I'm going to press S on my keyboard to go to scale. I'm going to click on Constraint Proportion so we can just modify these uh, separately. And then on the last one, I'll click on the 100 and I press uh, a minus before the 100 and that's going to reverse that layer then I can click on my move tool and while holding shift I can move it in a straight line up so just like this here next I have my two layers right here I can duplicate them put them on top here and move them over the black one here then I'll select all of these so we have more selected duplicate them again put them on top and move them forward like so and just keep doing this for the whole length of your composition then just select them all again duplicate it put them on top and move it up okay so I see that I have made a little bit too much I'll delete these two here so we have the whole range of our composition and then I'll delete my last um, background layer that we use as a reference so now we have made this up and next you can do is uh, well search for the beginning so uh, let's say we want to begin with this side here uh, we'll have to delete these uh, separately so you can press T on the keyboard to reveal the opacity here and press 0 create a new stopwatch here for 0 and then go ahead 3 frames by holding the page while well, pressing the page down on your keyboard that's going to move if we zoom in here it's going to move frame by frame so move ahead uh, like three frames or so and make it 100% so now over time of three frames it's going to fade in then it's up to you to just copy this and paste it on every single uh, one of these by holding shift and clicking on the last one here so now we have them all fading in next you can use a script or you can do it manually for this tutorial I'll just do it manually and speed up this part but you can offset them three frames at a time so you can zoom in a little bit more like put them over here deselect one with control and move ahead three frames this one as well and just keep doing this for all of these
Okay, so I'm done and I have offset all everything here so you can see that it fades in the complete track uh, like in the series it fades on. It's a little bit differently in this tutorial but yeah, it's just like trying new things and messing around with everything and see what, what effect works and what not. So um, if you have moving footage you can go up to window, you can go to tracker and make a track camera. Um, you can look up some tutorials on track camera, so this tutorial won't be making, uh, ex won't be explaining uh, track camera. It's a very simple method on yeah tracking the movement of your camera. So if you want to paste it on your floor and your camera is moving, uh, that it sticks to the floor. Also, if you have the camera tracker here, it will automatically analyze the size of your camera sensor. So um, the focal length, uh, it will calculate that automatically if it has enough information. For this shot, we don't know what lens we have used, but we have to create a new camera. So, uh, well, I know which lens I have used, but for just for the sake of it, we'll try and figure out on our own which lens we have used. Um, by doing a simple trick, uh, right click over here, go to new and add a new camera. Uh, let's start with a 35 millimeter camera and click OK and let's see if this works for us. To see if it works for us, I'll try and go to a point in time where I'm standing up so we can see the end, it's straight over here and this is the edge of our street view, uh, let's say, and we can use this as a reference to calculate uh, if the camera is okay or not. So let's create a new solid here and click OK, then go to effects and presets and apply a grid effect to our solid, so just generate grid over here and then we're going to make this a 3D layer because we have a camera in our scene we can make it 3D and then we can go to ro the rotate tool here and we can rotate it like 90 degrees and then yeah it's up to you oh um, up to you to move it around also rotate it like so maybe a little bit like so because the camera is in it in an angle so like right there and we can see that it's working pretty nicely then we're going to make it larger like so and also wider and we can see it, it kinda looks good enough you can see here if we we need this point to match up here so we'll move it back a little bit more and move it more to the right here and also rotate it a little bit more there we go so we can see 35 millimeters kind of sits up perfectly on the floor so that's interesting to know we can see the perspective is kind of right and it's very important to have the perspective right if we want to make it work uh, with the effect so um, I'll go back to like uh, six seconds in time I'll delete my grid it's just to calculate if the uh, camera is right or not so we'll delete our grid here go to project here and we are going to uh, add this comp one I'll rename it to tire transition on and I'll go back to my composition my original one and then tire track transition on I'll move it in my composition here and I'm going to rotate it well first of all I'm going to make it a 3d layer and then I'll snap it to the floor so um, let's make it like this move it down here also rotate it like so so it starts on here and goes off track also scale it up so it's a little bit bigger and then move it around like so. We could actually use our uh, grid effect to copy the position uh, but we'll do it just like this for now and move it a little bit more to the other side here and maybe it's a little bit too wide so I'm not sure. Uh, let's say we're going to use it like this here okay and let's see what that does so I'll start the composition at around five seconds or so and then I'll press B on the keyboard so it starts uh, the composition from on here so we can just preview this I'll delete my audio here well I'll put my audio off here so we don't see um, because it's real-time rendering and you also hear the audio stuttering so that's something that kind of irritates me and that it doesn't uh, mute it automatically while it's still calculating. Okay, if we play this back, let's see how this works. 
Okay, pretty cool actually. It's actually uh, better than my first try. Um, next, we are going to Effect Generate and we are going to add a fill. With the fill, we are going to click on the pipette tool and we are going to select one of the lighter colors here in our scene. Then we are going to click on the color and maybe make it a little bit lighter so it's just not uh, perfectly wide but more like an off white so it matches the scene a little bit better also the lighting of the scene then we're going to press T on the keyboard and we're going to lower the opacity to like 50 or 65 or so so it kind of is transparent and we can see the texture of the floor as well then we are also going to add a little blur effect so go to effects blur and add a fast blur we are going to apply a blur of 3 or maybe 5 it depends on your shot but it just it, it can't look perfectly sharp if it looks perfectly sharp you'll see that it, it's not real it doesn't match up our camera our camera is never as sharp as anything so uh, we have to blur it a little bit so like three I think three might work fine and then we'll click here and fit up to 100% and let's see how this looks right now okay so pretty cool uh, looks pretty nice actually you can still lower the opacity a little bit more if you think so. Uh, it depends on your taste and whatever you want. Uh, you can also apply like effects. Uh, well, go to effects and preset over here and add a drop shadow. You can apply that to our composition and we'll get a little shadow so uh, to match it in our scene a little, little bit more. So I'll zoom in, move over here and change the opacity to 100 for now. Now we can see here we can kind of match up the realistic lighting we can see the shadow is coming from uh, well it's catching up to the right so we'll try to match that up as well uh, so it was kind of okay so this looks kind of right and we're going to soften this to like 15 or maybe 35 let's take 35 and change the opacity to 30 as well and let's see the effect on and on it's just a minor detail but it kind of helps with your realism of this effect okay so now we have the tire tracks already done and uh, now it's the text coming up and the tire track disappearing so let's do that go to nine seconds um, and then press T on the keyboard uh, for our tire track click on the opacity move like and um, one second into time and uh, doing that we're going to hold shift and press page down that's going to uh, jump 10 frames ahead and as you know one second is 30 frames or 24 frames in this case uh, so press one more time and then click on zero here and now it's going to fade out our track next you can also uh, select both of these keyframes right click in keyframe assistance and click on easy ease that's going to fade them in uh, slowly faster and then slowly again so we can see that in the graph editor we can click on this button here and if you click on that you'll see that it's going to uh, start slowly go faster and start slow again and stop slowly again you can select these keyframes and drag these buttons in so it's a little bit more subtle so uh, it's a little slower at the beginning and faster on top and it just makes it look a little bit cleaner a little bit cooler uh, so uh, that's something you can do as well next we're going to click new text and we are going to enter our text so a uh, pretty cool effect uh, let's do it like that and yeah uh, I think semi bolt will be fine let's start with this and then well I have to select our text and semi bold okay uh, we are also going to make this a 3D layer, but we are going to click on our tire transition and press P on the keyboard and also hold shift and press R on the keyboard. That will reveal the position and the ori uh, orientation of our composition here that, and that is already a 3D layer and that we already uh, positioned correctly. Uh, and then we're going to, uh, well, first make sure the text is uh, centered here. We can see in the paragraph mine is centered, so make sure it is for you as well. It's going to make things a little bit easier. And then I'll click on my position and on my rotation, I'll press, uh, well, I'll hold control and press C on the keyboard to copy these effects and go to the pretty cool effect and paste it. So now it's going to snap on the same position of our tire track. You can see it right here. And that's going to, uh, well, snap on the same move uh, well the same location uh, click on pretty cool effect and then go to the rotation tool and then on the 
x axis here so the x is the red um, or arrow here you can hover over it so zoom in a little bit if you can't see it correctly uh, you can see if I hover on it you can see a little X on my keyboard if I hover here I see a Y so we can go to the X and then rotate it with the shift enabled it's going to snap to uh, a perfect 90 degrees and we can see the text is reversed so we also have to rotate our Y at 180 degrees okay so now we have our text here and we can make it maybe a little bit smaller like 200 should be fine go to the move tool and also on the X axis we'll, go, we'll move it a little bit closer to the camera here so we have our text already uh, on the great uh, on the good location here and we click on the tire transition and copy all the settings here and paste them on the text also the opacity for the text should be around 65 or maybe a little bit better a little bit greater so we can read it a little bit easier so maybe 85 should be working fine just make sure you have a little bit of opacity uh, so we can a little bit of transparency so we can see the texture of the background that's that's the most important so uh, we have our cool effect here let's press U on the keyboard for the tire transition so we can see when it's going to fade out so it's around here and let's go to this uh, first keyframe then click on our text press P on the keyboard and create a new keyframe for our position then move that keyframe to the last keyframe for the tire track and then right over here we're going to move our Y position just and beneath uh, the floor so kind of think this should be beneath the floor then we're also going to select these keyframes right click keyframe assistance and easy ease then we're going to click on our graph editor again and do the same thing we have done for the opacity of our tire track like so click out of the graph editor and we are going to create a new solid now so we're going to click OK it doesn't really matter how the solid looks we're going to uh, disable the solid here and go to the pen tool and we're going to draw a, like a line where the and ground should start for the text here so let's say here uh, we want it uh, to be under the floor so let's uh, let's do it like this and then just cover up the other end and now we have like a floor if we enable this and this should be the part that we don't see the text on we can see the text a little bit more so let's click on the text and maybe move it a little bit more towards the bottom so it's covered up completely by the solid here we're going to disable the solid and we're going to toggle the switches so we can see our track matte mode here we're going to click here and click on alpha inverted math for the text here and now it's going to disappear beneath the floor and if it's moving you will see it, it's uh, starting to appear uh, like it's coming from uh, through the through the floor so it's a pretty cool effect here you can see if we move frame by frame it's coming from the floor but we can see it's a very very sharp edge so what we can do here is press F on the keyboard for a mask here and maybe add a feather of 25 and that will feather it out a little bit and make it a, a nicer transition to um, appear on our effect okay so pretty cool effect that's it for this tutorial you can experiment add a little bit more elements uh, it's just basically the same workflow create a new composition create some shapes and layers and also import them in these and the footage and if you have some great results I would love to see what you have been creating um, yeah share your experiences share your videos I would love to see what you can come up with using my tutorial uh, that would be really really awesome if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments below be sure to subscribe to my channel for more effects in the future also video editing and filmmaking so thank you for watching and goodbye